welcome back to Engage. This is a five part study in the topic the fall and restoration of man. And if you have missed part three in this series, why did God commit sin? Subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. And in that way you won't miss any more of our future uploads. And before we move on to our new topic study, grab your Bibles and join us as we discover what God would have us to do in these last and evil days as we look at God's plan for the restoration of man part 1 of 2 Our Creator made man upright according to Ecclesiastes 7.29 However, Satan when cast to this earth was successful in his deception through the mediumship of the beautiful serpent in Eden the devil led Adam and Eve to disbelieve God's word and then into disobedience of God's commandments. Man was thus brought into bondage to the devil, according to 2 Peter 2.19. And also found in Romans 5.12, it states, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Question number one. In Adam's darkest hour, when he realized what he had lost, what statement did God make to the serpent? According to Genesis 3.15, and it reads, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. When man sinned, Christ, who created all things, according to John 1 verse 3, offered to die for him. Christ offered to pay the wages of sin, and in this sense, he was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world, as it states in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, and it reads, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. You can also read 1 Peter 1 verse 18 through 20. Question number 2. Of whose seed was man's deliverer to come? According to Genesis 3.15, and it says, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The seed of the woman was to bruise the serpent's head. Christ had to be the seed of the woman and made of a woman in order to meet the serpent on his own ground at the point where sin entered the human race. Question number three, was Christ made of a woman? Let us go to Galatians chapter four and verse four and five. And it reads, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman, made under the law. Verse five, to redeem them that were under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. Also, in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17, it states, Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he may be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Question number four. When Christ was born of Mary, did he partake of Mary's nature? Let's go to Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 and it says, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. The Bible plainly states, He took upon himself human nature, yet without sin, according to 
Hebrews 4 and 15 and it states for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin and according to John chapter 4 verse 6 he also became weary you can read that account there and also in Matthew chapter 4 verse 2 he also became hungry in John chapter 19 verse 28 it shows that Jesus also became thirsty these characteristics show that Jesus was a human being like you and I yet he never sinned even to satisfy his own needs we will conclude here and pick up in our next discussion in this topic God's plan for the restoration of man and until that time I am Emetheus Maranatha <laughs>